In a minute, I'm going to tell you about something that just happened, uh, which I just announced, that a reader of mine brought to me that is of major significance in the prophetic world. But first of all, I'd like to thank those who invested in my website ministry. Uh, uh, I presently, right now at this time, have one of the best uh, websites for those who are left behind in the world. Uh, with the cornerstone of a tribulation period survival guide book, which is, which is free, and a number of other resources, uh, tribulation period roadmaps and charts, uh, videos and things of that nature that are that are specifically designed for those left behind. In fact, the whole d uh, website is basically dedicated to those who uh, will have information that will specifically speak to what will happen during the tribulation period. And I had asked some of my members uh, if they would invest in keeping this website up and running way into the future in case the rapture did take place. And many of them did heed that call. And if you're still interested in making an investment in this ministry, uh, just uh, email me. Uh, go to my website or you can uh, get a hold of me through this channel. And I can give you the information on how it is that you can make an investment. Now I just wanted to mention one news item that has come up. Uh, as many of you know, uh, Iranian President uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is now visiting Egypt for the first time in many, many years. In fact, Egypt broke off ties uh, back in 1979 uh, uh, with Iran due to this the re Iranian revolution that took place during that time frame. But they are in the process of trying to restore ties. But this just in from Stratford says that uh, Egypt, Syrian crisis must uh, end before ties with Iran are restored. Presidential spokesman says in, in this short article from Stratford it says, an end to the Syrian crisis is a condition that must be met in order for Egypt to restore relations with Iran, an Egyptian presidential spokesman said February 6, uh, AP reported. The spokesman whose comments came before a summit on the Iranian crisis added that Cairo supports the Syrian opposition's proposal for talks with the regime in Damascus. Egypt and Iran have been cautiously reviving ties as they pursue their regional ambitions. Now with that said I'm going to uh, push on with the article that I really wanted to present and that is uh, this was sent to me from one of my viewers uh, who's been with me for a while uh, and it's entitled EU to have two types of memberships. Now I've been pushing this message for probably between seven and ten years that the EU was looking for a uh, core or should I say a dual core type of membership and I think now that very well could be the, th the case. This is what the article says. It says the European Union is to evolve into different structure composed of two distinct membership structures. Kimmel Div uh, Dervais, the vice president of the Brookings Institute and former Turkish economy minister uh, has said. The Union will comprise of a group of EU members that are completely integrated within the Eurozone and another group that has looser ties with the uh, Union but full membership like the United Kingdom according to Dervais's statement. The latter group will still be full status members of the Union but won't have to be completely integrated involved in uh, the Eurozone or give up their national sovereignty, he said during his speech at the Foundation for Political, Economic and Social Research, uh, Young Scholars on Turkey Conference February 5th. The former minister said the EU membership position he envisions for Turkey would be in the second group, as it would be a more reasonable status for the country and would allow the country to preserve its advantages while still benefiting from EU membership. Now frankly I don't ever see Turkey becoming a member of the EU even in a second tier type of position where they are still an autonomous country and uh, without uh, giving up any sovereignty. I still believe that uh, Turkey will make an alliance with Russia and some of the other nations in which uh, they will attack Israel so I don't believe that uh, they're uh, EU bound. We're getting back to a dual core type of EU that is in the works. 
frankly at this point in time we don't know enough about what the final draft will look like uh, when this is presented but uh, it would not shock me a bit if this was broken down and the top tier nations were a group of 10 nations. I guess what I'm trying to say is don't be shocked if that is the outcome. Now here's something that just came in from Pirates. Uh, it's breaking news. Uh, uh, as some of you may know, there's going there's an uh, Islamic summit conference in Cairo that's uh, about ready to take place, and uh, this is what Mr. Ahmadinejad had to say regarding Israel. And the article reads says Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad um, says that. While Iran is already a nuclear state, it has no intention of attacking Israel. Ahmadinejad was interviewed on the eve of his visit to Cairo, where he will attend the 12th Islamic Summit Conference due to open there on Wednesday. And the article further goes on to say, it says, Ahmadinejad said the world must now treat Iran as a nuclear country. They want Iran to go back to what it was in the past, but they won't succeed. They assume we'll give in to pressure. Such thoughts are misguided. We're already an industrial and nuclear country, a country that has conquered space. For years, we have been thinking about sending a human being into space, and we will do that with Allah's help. We must ensure development and growth and bring them to pass, and the world must acknowledge our progress he said, adding that the best solution was cooperation with Iran. And frankly, I think that's exactly what uh, will happen. I think that the world will finally see, led by the United States, and then uh, uh, eventually took, take, uh, will be taken over by the, the European Union, I believe, uh, that they will make a deal with Iran, and it will be part of a blockbuster Middle East deal that will bring not only peace to Israel but to Syria and will end the civil war there and will also uh, bring a halt to Iran's nuclear uh, ambitions. But I want to bring this information to you today because I think this is something that you sincerely need to watch. So keep an eye on this situation with the European Union because I think that it will de it will finally break down into a uh, dual core type of European Union in which I believe 10 nations will be in the first tier and the other nations that will be in the second tier. Those that are not considered ready to be a part of a full-blown membership. And let me say one thing about Egypt. This is something that you want to keep in mind. If Egypt at some point in time decides that they no longer want to be associated with the United States any longer that's when you really need to start worrying about Egypt and their direction for the future. Right now Egypt is, is, is in critical condition financially and they need every dime they can get from outside sources just to stay afloat. They're, uh, they are on the brink of collapse and if not for outside funding from the United States and other places of that nature they would have gone under a long time ago and they're going to need that financial uh, assistance years on in down the road. But as long as they are financially dependent upon their survival uh, with, uh, on the, with the United States, they are going to, I believe, stay loyal to their peace treaty with Israel. But of course that could change in a moment, in a second, and I would be shocked in, in another way that Egypt would show their hand and break a peace treaty with Israel just out of the clear blue. I think if Egypt were to attack or were to take part in some type of attack against Israel, it would be a spur of the moment thing and would likely be because of the fact that war is taking place. But I don't foresee them breaking their peace treaty with Israel just to break it. It will it, when they break their peace treaty, it will be cause it will be because a war has broken out. Whether it be uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 war or whether it be a Psalm 83 type scenario. But as I said, keep an eye on what's going on in this particular arena. I think you might see something develop in, in the near future. And as always, I'd like to close with this word, and that is that if you don't know Jesus as Savior today, today is the day for you to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Just uh, repent of your sins and confess that you are a sinner and acknowledge that He is the Savior and that He died for your sins uh, and begin to live for Him. 
and uh, if you can do that uh, then you too can have eternal life and a, a home in heaven well this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report